I want to talk to you today about a the faithless and perverse nation of Israel. I'm going to draw a very crude flag here. And this flag represents the real reality of this faithless and perverse nation. This nation was once a godly nation. The people would say, the God of Israel, that's the true God. He's the real God. Now people blaspheme God because of this nation right here. And the more I study, the more I start to realize, boy, are they in trouble. <laughs> Um, the Jews are in trouble in the future. That's why it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And I'm going to be doing more studies on this um, as I get into more of this research. I'm never going to turn on the Jewish people. I will promise you that, ever. But uh, I've had my brain rewired in a lot of ways. Uh, you can turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 17. And um, I used to think that the Jewish people in the end times were the victims of the end times. Some are, some, but uh, the nation of Israel is not the victim of the end times, it's the cause of the end times. That's why it's the time of Jacob's trouble. They're in trouble. And if you are Jewish uh, and you're not a Christian, if you're not believing in Jesus Christ as your Messiah, well, you might want to listen to what I'm about to say today in this study. Matthew chapter 17 beginning in verse 14, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And of course, Jesus Christ rebukes the devil and it leaves him. But you see there, he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Who's he saying that about? The nation of Israel. What a shame. What happened to this nation that was very favored of God under King David? King Solomon for a while until he started to worship other gods. Like the star of your god, Remphan. Worshipping a star of a pagan god. A star that uh, is used elsewhere. I'll do it with black. It's more appropriate. Where you have a um, square and compass with the G in the middle. You ever see that? Hmm. They worship a star to the east. Uh, the east order of the eastern star. What's the order of the eastern star look like? Let's see how to do this. Order of the eastern star. An inverted pentagram. They like stars. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's go back to the Old Testament. And if you understand what the real meaning of this symbol is, and ultimately this symbol here, it's the symbol of not gnosis or God, here the G, it's generativity. It is a sex symbol. Just to be very blunt with you. The upward pointing triangle represents the male. The downward pointing triangle represents the female. And I won't get into any more about it than that. But you bring the two together, you have generation. Generativity. And what does God think about the children of Israel? Deuteronomy chapter 32, beginning in verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. The words of the Lord are pure words. We're reading them. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. 
because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Jesus Christ is the rock which the church is built upon, not Peter. To all the Catholics out there. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. So just, oh, Jesus was attacking. Jesus was anti-Semitic or something. Well, Jesus came as a Jew, so he's not really anti-Semitic. But, oh, he was attacking the nation of Israel. Back here in the book of Deuteronomy. In the Torah. Still true, very much true today. Verse 6. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought, bought thee? Hath he made, not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. And yet you gave it up, didn't you? You Jewish people out there. I believe, I believe the Bible. Okay, I believe that there's a remnant in the end times that have not mingled themselves with the other nations. But man, the more I study, the more I see things, and it's just this person's mixed with the Jews, and that one's mixed with it. This Jew is involved in the Federal Reserve, creation of the Federal Reserve, Paul Werberg, and this one here, and that one there is involved with this, and this one's, and I just think, oh, what happened to your people, Lord? And it grieves me, it vexes me. It isn't something that's, oh, that's Jews, I hate the Jews. My, no, no. I have more Holy Spirit in me than to go with that kind of satanic nonsense. I don't hate the Jewish people, but I'm grieved by the Jewish people. This shouldn't be your flag, Israel. This shouldn't be what you join and get part of here and your women there. Shame on you. How dare you do those things? You've given up your inheritance. You've given up the greatness that Israel once was. Verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. There is now. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. And Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Yet Jewish comedians standing up and, and making whole things against Jesus Christ. The Talmud comes out and, and says horrible, vile things about Jesus Christ. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that, they came, that came newly up when your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Old Testament. Okay? First five books. I wonder if they teach this stuff in the Torah Institutes. I highly doubt it. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. The first time that the word faith shows up in your King James Bible, right here, there it is. There's no faith in them. This nation right now, this wicked nation, with all the little scheming that they're doing and everything else, um, do they have faith? In Jesus Christ? 
singing their song and I don't know how it goes or whatever. I don't know Hebrew. Da, 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 don't know the words. We're hoping someday, the hope of Israel, we want to be able to see our Messiah someday. Hey, stupid, he already came. <laughs> He's already been here. You crucified him. You put him to death. And he's shown all kinds of proof. The greatest book that ever showed up on this earth, and yet you'll attack this book. You'll attack preachers like me. Well, you have it coming. You do. <laughs> Jews out there, that, there are saved ones. I've known a few. I'll bet they're few and far between. Verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, save Gentiles. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will he heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust, the sword without and terror within. Huh, late 2023. Yeah, it's a little bit of terror within there. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. And don't, if you think that the whole thing in October, I think it was or whatever, the Hamas attack, if you think that that's where it ends, you are sadly mistaken. More sure word of prophecy here. You ready? There's going to be a lot of violence in Israel. Lots of it. Get ready to see a lot of dead bodies over there. You say, well, I'm in America. This is our country now. We're not leaving it. Oh, you're going to be leaving it because it's going to be even worse here in America. Because God's Word decrees it to be so. And I know you don't believe in God's Word, but you will. You don't believe in Jesus, but you will. Verse 26, I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should have should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one choose a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Interesting because back in the book of Revelation, uh, it's called Sodom in Egypt. Jerusalem is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Hmm. You say, I reject the New Testament. Well, the Old Testament still has your number. Uh, wicked nation of Israel, perverse and crooked generation. <clears throat> Verse 34, Is not this laid up in store with me, and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. <laughs> I mean, what amazing prophecy right here. The things that are coming upon them are making haste. The time of Jacob's trouble is rapidly approaching. All the BRICS nations are growing and they're building. There's 10 now, officially part of BRICS, more to come in the future. They don't like Israel. And they're starting to give or orders to Israel. I mean, the land of Gaza belongs to Israel. I fully support them kicking out the, the Palestinians, you know, the Ishmaelites. Kick them out of that land, absolutely. But um, you're going to make a lot of people mad in doing so. You better be careful not to go after land that doesn't belong to you and get into little scheming and stuff that you shouldn't be into. That's very dangerous. Verse 36, For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. 
Interesting because the modern, if you know anything at all about the modern state of Israel and the modern uh, Jews, we call them papal union as a little kind of an insight. You have to understand some things to get what we're saying there. Um, the papal union are Jews that have yoked up with Roman Catholicism. See, people think foolishly think that the Jews run the world. That's, you have to be rather stupid to think that, very ignorant of what the truth of the matter is. The Jews don't run the world. The Vatican runs the world. Mystery Babylon, it's a city that runs the, the world. That's why all the leaders come and they bow before the Pope, you know. They don't do that before Benjamin Netanyahu. But there it says, that verse there, um, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? The gods of Israel, the Masonic gods and everything else there, Remphan and Shion and Shemosh and all this other stuff. Um, but then you have their rock, lowercase r, in whom they trusted. We have no king but Caesar, they say, when Jesus Christ is going to be crucified. We have no king but Caesar. That's their, their uh, rock in whom they trusted. Peter, the rock upon which the church is founded. St. Peter, you know. Hmm, interesting little prophecy there for the future. Verse 38, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Catholic Church does that. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. The time's going to come when the Jews will be calling for the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, the Jesuits that they're in bed with. And they're going to say, help us, please help us. And the Vatican's going to say, hey, we have our own problems. And then you'll see the Vatican being destroyed. Mystery Babylon gets destroyed. And then the Jews are saying, the merchants of the earth are wailing. and Oh, we lost all this money. Oh, what are we going to do? Paul prophesied. Going to happen. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold of, on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea the son of Nun. Uh, I'm reading this whole thing, yeah. Um, and Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe, to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life, and through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abarim, and unto Mount Nebo, uh, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession, and die in the mount, whither thou goest up, and he gathered unto, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people, because ye transgressed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, <clears throat> and the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel." Um, God had a controversy there with Moses. But look at this. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. God says, go on up here into the mountain and die, but I am going to show you the land eventually, just not right now. Hmm. When does that happen? Go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Beginning in verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the, unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. 
These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Stop there. I've heard some really stupid, you know, things about this, you know, passage here. And there was some guy had some video with fancy dramatic music, dun, 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 you know, all this stuff and, and special effects and, and everything. And, and it's actually not Moses and Elijah. It's not actually men. It's actually the Old Testament, the New Testament, or the, the you know, the law and the prophets or some kind of thing like this. Uh, the law and the prophets don't have mouths. Okay. Well, that's symbolically, it's, symb it's talking about two men. And if you study it, it's Moses and Elijah. It's not Enoch and Elijah. All right, Moses and Elijah showed up on the Mount of Transfiguration. God says to Moses that we just read that back there in Deuteronomy 32, I'm going to show you this land, just not now. You're not going in thither with these people. You're going to die here in the mountain, and you're going to be gathered to your people, but you're going to come back, and you're going to see this land someday. That's when this is fulfilled. He's going to come to that land of Israel and see it. They're going to be prophesying. They're going to be doing a lot of the things that they did, Moses that he did in Exodus, and Elijah what he was doing. Very interesting study. I did that, the coming Exodus study, many, many years ago. But let's continue. Um, verse 7, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of, that great, of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Talked about that earlier. Jerusalem, what it's talking about there. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall suffer, not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days, three days and in half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Hmm. Very interesting there. It's a visual thing. And this wicked nation, this perverse wicked nation here, that nation is all of a sudden going to realize Moses and Elijah are back. And we've been very wicked. And now we're going to pay for it. Huh faithless and perverse nation of Israel. Um, Revelation chapter 14. Two more places to turn to here. Revelation 14, verse 1 through 12. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him in 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard, heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not, were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among, among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Unless you use an NIV, then it's not an angel that flies in the midst of heaven, it's an eagle. A speaking, talking eagle. I'm not joking, look it up. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon has fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. 
and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Sorry to all the people out there that believe that hell is just annihilation or something. No, it's not. They suffer forever and ever. Right there, Revelation 14, 11. Take it as it is, but you have to spiritualize it to try to get away from the reality that people actually burn forever. Um, a lot of Jews, a lot of these people that are part of this nation right now, they're going to be there in that verse, burning forever. But look at verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You're going to have to keep the faith of Jesus and the commandments of God in that time period. Faith and works. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to get saved right now, if you're Jewish, now's the time. <laughs> now's the day of salvation. Don't wait around. Well, I think I'd like to see some of this stuff. I'd like to see some of these things so I get, you know, belief in this New Testament. Oh, you'll see it. You'll see it. But uh, most of them, they aren't going to make it. A remnant is going to be saved. Revelation chapter 16, we'll end there. Revelation chapter 16, verse 17 through 19. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven and from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Understand again that the book of Revelation is not chronological. It's not Revelation chapter 1 begins it, and then it goes through to the chapter 22, and the, it's just, you know, it's retelling and retelling. So if you see, the Babylon, the great city Babylon there, comes in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, verse 19. You say, but I thought it said that Babylon fell back there in previous chapters. That's correct, because it's retelling things. Again, please understand that. You have somebody that says, I can take you through the book of Revelation, start to finish, and show you all the events. They're not going to be able to do it. They don't understand the book of Revelation. And you say, do you understand it perfectly? No, I do not, because it's a sealed book. Jesus Christ is the only one that will truly unseal it. But I can say, however this whole thing works out, I know what happens. It's retelling certain events over and over in greater detail, greater or lesser detail there. But um, the faithless uh, and perverse generation, um, for the faithless and perverse nation of Israel, generation, um, they have it coming. There's some bad stuff that's going to come. And you see that there's a great earthquake and it wipes out Jerusalem, Sodom and Egypt is what it's called at that time. And then the Lord says, okay, now I'm going to go after Babylon. Why? Because the Jewish people have adopted this, the strange gods of the Vatican, of historic paganism, the heathens out there. They've yoked up. And quite frankly, I would say you could probably see some collusion between the Jews and, you know, ancient Babylon or something like that. You had obviously Daniel was part of the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and he was part of it there, but he was separate from it. He was not, you know, exactly going along with it completely. I mean, he was a basically bond servant in captivity, um, so he had to go along with some of it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, same thing. But I wouldn't really call that collusion per se. But when you get to the first century and you have the, Sa the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, um, now they're starting to work together. King Herod and all the other stuff, they're starting to work together now. And um, when you have them putting to death Jesus Christ, the Jews doing the trial, the Romans doing the crucifixion, and he says, Pilate says, shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. And that's when the covenant began between the Jews and the Romans. And as I study this thing more and more, I'm starting to see it isn't just, you know, that the Jews or the Catholics worked with the Jews. There are Jews in the Vatican. There are Jews that have been there. I know people said, you know, that, that Ignatius de Loyola was actually a Jew or whatever else. Well, I don't think he was a pure Jew. I think he was mingled. Um, but the mingling of the Holy Seed with this corrupt 
and they are merging. They're becoming one. Flesh being, or uh, clay being mixed, miry clay being mixed with iron, excuse me, that fifth kingdom. That's why the Lord has to say, I'm going to bring back 144,000 young Jewish male virgins that are not defiled with women. I mean, where in the Bible does it say anything about a man gets married and he's defiled now or something? It, it's not there. What's it talking about? It's saying that the, God doesn't want their seed mingled because they've been doing it for years, for centuries, for thousands of years. The Jews have been mingling their holy seed. God says, I have an inheritance for you. I have something special for you. Don't mess it up. Well, you know, I, we kind of like to join with some things. There's some fraternal organizations we'd like to be part of. You know what I mean? Probably somebody's going to take a picture of this now and say, look at that. He's got satanic symbols on the thing, and that proves that he's part of it or something. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, a pretty wild study. Um, but the Bible's a wild book, isn't it? So that will be it for this study. <clears throat> I have one more to do. Hopefully my voice will hold out till then. But uh, thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you for all those who support the ministry. We'll see you in upcoming videos. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.